things I've ever said about Italian filmmaker Bruno Mattai, I must admit, sometimes the guy has his moments. Now, don't get me wrong, the guy has made a ton of bad movies, and when they're bad, they are really bad. For one thing, he jumps from one blatant movie ripoff to another, and two, when he remakes these films, he tends to do it with all the grace and subtlety of a six-year-old caffeine addict with attention deficit disorder. But to compare Bruno Mattai to Ed Wood is probably a little unfair, because the guy does have one important thing working for him, and that's his balls. Wait, no, sorry, his balls are two things. Um, his movies are balls, have balls, and that can really work in a guy's favor sometimes. For instance, I really trashed his early work in porn and exploitation films, but one of his earliest movies, Private House of the SS, was actually pretty damn good as far as Nazi exploitation goes. Now, I know it sounds ridiculous, and trust me, I know what this looks like, but what starts out to be a ripoff of Salon Kitty turns out to be one of the better examples of the genre. In many ways, it's downright inspired. In fact, this is almost exactly the kind of movie that Quentin Tarantino's trying to make when he does films like Inglorious Bastards, right down to the soundtrack and the broad, borderline, cartoonishly grotesque characters. You Schweinhund, your pants are patched. <laughs> How degrading. <laughs> So I guess what I'm saying is that for all his many faults, Bruno Mattai does Nazi porn well. Sometimes. Well, and you could also say this for him. The man gets Reb Brown. Say what you will about RoboWar, because it sucked on almost every level, but who the hell even noticed? You were watching Reb Brown, one of the most talented and compelling action stars in history, doing what he does better than anyone else in the world in almost every single frame of that movie, and it was glorious! <laughs> and that's why I love Strike Commando, another Bruno Mattai copy of an American action movie classic. Which action movie? Well, unlike Robo War, it's a little harder to tell because Bruno's not being quite as blatant here. So, I'll just let those of you playing at home have a try before I just come right out and tell you. But I gotta tell you the truth, this movie had me hooked right from the box art. Just look at this. This cover is fantastic, and I'm being serious. You might as well just forget the title of this movie and call it Reb Brown, motherfuckers, because this one picture sums up everything that kicks ass about Reb Brown. There are thousands of people trying in vain to kill our beefy, bulging hero. His face is frozen in an eternal howl of rage and defiance as he shoots the biggest machine gun in the world with a grenade launcher mounted under what appears to be six rotating Gatling barrels, which are all firing simultaneously. I can't even begin to tell you in how many ways this fucking gun is impossible. My favorite part is that he's covered in belt ammunition, despite the fact this gun doesn't even appear to be belt fed. Anyway, the movie opens with Reb, who plays Sergeant Michael Ransom, leading his team of strike commandos into a Vietnamese base, who are attempting to covertly place some explosives, while his commanders watch from a nearby vantage point. You've no need to worry, Colonel Reddick. Where your air force has failed, my strike commandos won't. Two minutes, Carly. Wait, two minutes? Two minutes until what? The commandos cut a giant hole in the base's perimeter fence that, for some reason, a nearby tower guard with a searchlight just doesn't see, and they run inside to plant the charges. Hey, don't get the other. Tell them, ma. Ah, there's a. guy die? Nobody shot him or anything. That guy just sort of runs up and pelvic thrusts into him and he falls over a table. What, did that kill him? And the soldier just seems to assume the guy's dead despite just lightly bumping into him. Well, unfortunately, the operation goes completely tits up when one of the commandos is caught and raises the alarm. So you felt a gun poking you in the back, and you thought you'd be able to take him by whirling around with a knife. Are you just assuming this guy has the worst reflexes imaginable? But what really kills me about this scene is the size of the fucking machine gun this ordinary sentry is toting around. But isn't this a support weapon? It's bigger than he is! Yeah, okay, dude, we're up. You can stop blowing the whistle. Yeah, we get it! Yeah, alarm, intruders, enough already! Reb's commander, Colonel Raddick, hears what's going on in the base below and blows up the bombs early rather than jeopardize the mission. They're all dead. That's the risk they ran. They had another minute to go. The mission, Major. Above all, the mission. Ooh, I hate that guy. He's just so smug. Hey, you know, 
These explosions look awfully familiar, don't they? That's right, Robo War. That's Bruno Matai, folks, the only guy who can rip himself off. Ransom gets blown into a nearby river and drifts unconscious until he's rescued near death by some villagers who are under siege by the Viet Cong. They decide that since he's American, he might be able to rescue them, so they nurse him back to health until... <laughs> That came out of nowhere! Okay, I'll bite. Why in the hell is everyone in white face? And who in the hell thought it'd be a good idea to have the first thing the guy in a coma sees upon waking up is to be surrounded by figures looming over his bed who all look like the fucking devil from The Exorcist? And what's worse is that it took me forever to figure out what movie this scene is ripping off. <laughs> Come on, Bruno, can't we all just get beyond Thunderdome? How many times do you get to use that joke, people? Never! Woo! Anyway, this bearded swarthy guy explains that the village used to be based around a French church before it was destroyed by... Hey, wait, I know this guy! We will need a lot more hemp before we're through. I've seen way too many fucking movies. We've been under constant attack here every day the Viet Cong. That is, until the arrival of the Russians. The Russians? What the hell are you talking about, old man? After learning from the drunken French caveman that the Russians have an armed presence in North Vietnam, Ransom agrees to take the villagers to safety by marching them into, um, South Vietnam, I guess. Along the way, they find a skeletal paratrooper whose radio appears to still be intact. If it works, you are very lucky. <laughs> They're almost indestructible. Yeah, if only soldiers wore armor made out of radios. Oh, 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 you look like a bunch of ruptured ducks. Uh, I, I still have no idea what that means. Anyway, Ransom radios his home base and tells his surprise commander, who I just figured out kind of looks like Gary Busey, that he's alive and oh, where he can be picked up. And then Ransom spontaneously has some I mean, kind of a temper tantrum. About 20 clicks east of Old Delta Point. Gotcha, Strike One. Where are the rest of you? The rest of Strike Command demands vengeance. Serafinian. Sambello. Kane. Dirty! What the hell are you saying, Ransom? They all demand justice! Honestly, I have no idea what Ransom is trying to accomplish here by going on this little tirade. I get that he's angry Radic sort of screwed his team over, but why would you directly threaten your only chance of rescue? Eagle Command! Calling Eagle Command! This is Marmoset 1 requesting immediate evac from deep behind enemy lines for myself and a hundred other refugees that you have no interest in rescuing. Oh, and by the way... The members of my squad that you murdered demand justice, and I swear to God, as soon as I get back, I'm gonna write every one of their goddamn names on the wall with your severed dick! So, uh, what's your ETA, over? He's got 20 goddamn Vietnamese with him, without any authority. I should think you're the one who has to justify to ransom. I don't have to justify crap. Despite all this, Radic agrees to send a rescue team if Ransom can get to a rendezvous point within 24 hours. I guess figuring that he's so far behind enemy lines that he's got no chance to survive anyway. But this guy knows better. Is he really that good? There's no one who can touch him. In your whole damned army. You don't need to rescue Ransom from Vietnam, Colonel. You need to rescue Vietnam from Ransom. That night, Ransom's group makes camp, and the boy who rescued him from the river asks him about what it's like in America. Father Francois told me about a wonderful place where Mickey Mouse and Donna Duck live. Disneyland. They have popcorn and ice cream growing on trees. See, that's why living in Arizona just sucks, man. My ice cream trees would never grow in this fucking heat. All secret wishes come true there. Anything you want can be granted to you by the genie from the magic lamp. I'm here to serve you, little master. Command that I will obey. Yeah, yeah, you'd think there'd be a genie in the magic lamp, wouldn't you? I had a magic lamp once, you know what it was filled with? Bullshit and demons! I don't even, I don't even know what hurts worse today. The devil or the lies. The next day, the group runs into some resistance when they try to cross a river. Get out! Oh crap, I forgot you guys don't speak English! Uh, what's Vietnamese for get down? 
The gunfire seems to come from a nearby patrol boat, but why they shot these guys and not Reb and the others who were just standing around in plain sight, I don't know. But Reb decides he's going to strip down and take out that boat. I stole this when I was in the French Army in 1955. And that's not all. I stole the captain's woman, too. Hot damn. <laughs> <laughs> we will need a lot more hemp before we're through. But even as Reb heads out to attack the boat, the rest of the refugees come under attack from a flanking group of VC. Bonjour. Ransom dumps a whole bunch of grenades in the boat when one might have done, but whatever. The refugees continue to make their retreat, which is hampered somewhat because the old guy has to keep stopping every 30 yards to have another heart attack and drink from his bottomless bottle of booze. Yeah, let's see. Sweaty, drunk, hairy, filthy. Yeah, he's French. Surprise, but sexy. Do you remember me, Frenchman? I must break you. <laughs> Reb finds the French guy's body, and even though he's holding a Russian insignia torn from the bald guy's uniform, how much you want to bet in the next shot? Yup, there it is. <laughs> the Russians start following the refugees, so Reb starts following the Russians and picking them off one by one. Oh, come on, that's a guy in blackface! Oh. Reb gets a few of them, but decides there's too many of them and makes a break for the rendezvous point as the VC start laying waste to the whole area with mortars. Do you bastards, and then for no reason, a ton of these guys just spring out of the fucking rice paddy behind them, which for these guys is stupid for two reasons. One, they're standing in the same area their own men are mortaring, and two, there's no cover and no reason to stop Ransom from doing this. Why were they chasing him? Why didn't they just shoot him? Anyway, the asshole Colonel Raddick decides the rescue mission is too risky and orders the helicopters to return. Is this looking familiar yet? Return to base! I want you to abort the mission immediately. I say again, this is a recall. Come on! We're going down! We're not going anywhere. That's right, this movie is modeled after Rambo First Blood Part 2, but unlike Rambo 2, in which Rambo is stranded by the rescue team, the Colonel Troutman equivalent in this movie manages to talk one of the pilots into landing and picking Ransom up anyway. I was actually really confused by this. I mean, isn't it sort of skipping right to the end of Rambo 2? And since this is Bruno Matai, I was fully expecting to see the Red Brown equivalent of this. But no! In this movie, Colonel Troutman actually manages to calm him down. So much so that he even volunteers for Colonel Raddick to send him back out into the shit alone to go take photographs so there's actual evidence of the Russian presence in Nam. Photographs? Just photographs. Ugh, it's like watching Rambo 2 on VHS tape, falling asleep in the middle of it, and then waking up just as the tape has rewound itself and started playing again. Anyway, Ransom goes back and finds the village he just left has been destroyed by the Russians. Warning, what follows is the funniest thing ever recorded on film. Your head may explode. Dakota was his name. America, tell me, tell me about Disneyland. <laughs> they got tons of popcorn there. Yeah. And all you gotta do is go climb a tree to go eat it. <laughs> and there's cotton candy. Mountains of it. Oh. And chocolate milk. And baldness. And there's a genie. A magic genie. And there's Captain EO. And the Hall of Presidents. And the It's a Small World ride. But you don't want to go on that one because it sucks. Ah. <laughs> Oh shit, you just made it personal, man. You just killed people he's known for nine, maybe ten hours. John Cogna! Reb mugs a random VC guy to find Jakota, who points him to an abandoned looking outpost. Bring me to Jakota! Reb's still in full on apeshit mode, though, and he's gonna start settling some accounts here. John Cogna! I hate you, thatched roofs! Land empty villager! You're looking 
for me, Americanski. Unfortunately, Jakota proves to be a tactical genius by, you know, hiding until Reb runs out of ammo, and takes him prisoner once he finishes his complete spaz attack. Yeah, you must admit, Reb's kinda got no one to blame for this one but himself. They've taken him prisoner. Those goddamn Russians are behind this whole deal. Now they'll torture his ass. Then they start to torture him by making him do yard work while beating him with sticks! Ow, ow hey! Come on, cut it out of you guys! Jeez! Then they strap him to a box spring and electrocute him, and they even take a fucking blowtorch to his back! After weeks of being locked in a cell with a rotting corpse, Ransom finally breaks and agrees to Dakota's demand to make a demoralizing radio broadcast. I know the war isn't going very well right now. And so that's the reason I'm telling you guys to hang in there Stop and it. fight like hell Get away from and there. show these bastards who the hell we are. No, hey, what the? Now that was totally out of left field. Other than screaming incoherently for five seconds, he gave us virtually no warning. Maybe next time we should probably tie up the train commander who's already killed dozens of our friends. Ransom takes Dakota's girlfriend Olga hostage and fights his way out of the base. He then jumps a patrol of four idiots using Olga as bait and kills them the Bruce Lee way by, uh, making them eat grass. Hang on, yeah, Jesus! You scared the shit out of me! He then calls Colonel Raddick for another rescue. Jeez, we might as well call this movie Get to the Choppa because that's all he does in this movie. Come on! Someone's got to pick you up here. Colonel Raddick here. Raddick's working for the KGB. You thick-hated hero. Oh, come on! Just because the guy's blown me up, killed my squad, abandoned me to die on several occasions, and led me directly into several enemy ambushes, that doesn't make him a communist! Eliminate him! Beg pardon? I said shoot him! Okay, maybe you were right. I'm a big enough man to admit it. Jakoda! I mean, Radic! Ransom fires back and forces Radic's helicopter to retreat. Then he sees a Chinese patrol boat and decides to attack it for... some reason. At first I thought he was just gonna take it over and sail it back to base, but no. He starts placing grenades everywhere, and he's just about to jump off the boat with- WHOA! Well, this is certainly undignified. Guys, I can't be sure, but he may not actually be speaking Chinese. Ah. Our father who art never- Rep gets back on shore, and why he left the shore, I have no idea. Only to have Jakota boot him in the fucking head and challenge him to a fight. Get up, and see what you can do with your fists. Wow. Reb's in remarkably good shape for someone who's just been brutally tortured with a blowtorch. Yeah. I, I really don't know what's sadder here. The fact that he actually thinks he can take Reb in a fair fight, or that he thinks Reb ever fights fair. Kick his ass, Reb! Get you some! Establish these things, movie! <laughs> so Reb goes back home looking for Radic. Radic! Ah, I see, you were saving this scene for later. I mean, you've really shown some evolution since Robo War, in which you would have just done the scene twice. Where are you? Ransom! Where is he? Radix fled. Where? No one knows where. But wait, General Christopher Walken knows! Babies, before we're done here, y'all be wearing gold-plated diapers. It turns out Radix gone AWOL and set himself up as an importer-exporter in Manila. Today, even! Once Ransom gets there, he tells the secretary at the front desk to deliver a message to Radix that Ransom is here for his ass. What did you put there? It's a bomb. <laughs> 
Don't worry. We got around two minutes yet. Ah, uh, yeah, it's one of those two-minute grenades. You know, when you need something killed in a little while. The secretary runs off and raises the alarm, even going so far as to go grab an assault rifle from the supply closet to join the fight. Lady, think about this. Are you really getting paid that well? I always love the look on Raddick's face when he hears the explosion up front and gets the call that Ransom is coming. He's all, oh, shit. But there's no stopping Rev from getting to Raddick, no matter how many overacting, floppy-headed spaz henchmen get in his way. Radio. They're almost indestructible! Well, I guess I'm done with this. I can't foresee needing a gun in the near future. Oh hell. I'm going to kill you for this. Oh, snap. Jakota's back, and this time he's got a set of metal teeth because, um... Well, anyway, this fight doesn't take that long because Ransom keeps a hand grenade crotch for emergencies and shoves it in the guy's mouth. But too bad it's one of those grenades with a two-minute fuse. We will need a lot more hemp before we're through. These Russian dentists. Make some pretty good dentures. Come on, Reb! You know that was always the biggest weakness in your game? You never had any good post-kill quotes to say over the villain's smoldering corpse. Like, that must really bite, or chew on that for a while, or you are what you eat. I mean, that's why Schwarzenegger made it and you didn't. Any similarity between persons living or dead, especially dead, <laughs> is purely accidental. Very accidental. Like one in a million, maybe. Okay, what in the hell was the point of that? We go through this entire movie without a narrator, and now you're pissing all over the fourth wall with some cheeky self-referential monologue? You can't really think we're that stupid, can you? I can only assume that you were trying to be funny or ironic, because was anybody out there seriously thinking this was a documentary or based on true events or on a real person? No, because it's based on Rambo fucking too, and only someone who's completely fucking delusional would call that similarity accidental. One in a million, maybe my ass. You know, I am so sick of this Italian shit. I'm tired of these uh, overseas knockoffs of American films. I want an original American movie where the actors speak American. You know what, I'm gonna go find myself an American Red Brown movie made by Americans. In America. Let's go!